Hey everybody, this is Jimmy Carter, and this uh, lesson, this pre-calculus lesson, is on uh, solving systems of equations in two variables and three variables. I'm going to do section 2.1 in the board problem right here. So if this is just uh, your algebra 1 slash algebra 2 skills, solving uh, systems of equations, uh, you're introduced to this in algebra 1, uh, and then, uh, and then reintroduced re again in algebra 2. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, solve these systems of equations. So go ahead and pause it, and then I'll go through this here, you guys. And, uh, okay, on this first one right here, what I did is I subtracted 3x on both sides, and then I used the substitution property. Uh, so I get y equals negative 3x minus 8, and then substitute it in for that y right there. Okay, so I get um, uh, uh, that quantity right there, and then I'm going to distribute the 3 through. Okay, and then combine like terms. And I get x equals negative 3, and then x equals negative 3 is going right back up there where the y equals. And I get um, y equals 1, so the answer is negative 3, 1. Okay. Uh, all right, here was number 2. Okay, since uh, both of these are equal to y, then I set this quantity equal to this quantity right here because they both equal y. And then uh, a lot of my students freak out cause just because of that, that denominator right there. Well, don't freak out, you guys. Let's just get rid of it. Multiply this times 4, this times 4, this times 4, this times 4, and there's no more fractions. Okay? So you get uh, that, and then I'm going to go ahead and add 8x to both sides and subtract 8 from both sides. And I get x equals 4. You can put in x equals 4 into either one of those equations. I chose the top one so I can avoid fractions. Um, uh, and I get uh, 4, negative 3. I have a whole unit on fractions, by the way. I'll put on, I'll put up line here soon. So, anyways, uh, and then uh, number three, uh, there it is, right there. I went ahead and did substitution property again. I substituted in this uh, x that equals 38.5 minus 4y, and for that x, okay, don't freak out because it's a decimal, you guys. I mean, they're just, just the same. They're just numbers. All right, and then uh, put the 3 through, and I'm just speaking from experience of my students. They, they freeze when they see a fraction or a decimal, and you guys know who you are. And then go ahead and distribute that through, and then I combined uh, negative 12y minus 2y is negative uh, 14y. And then I subtracted 115.5. Whoops, should this, this should be a 0.5 there. I got it over there. So when I did a 115.5, let's see if I can still get that in there. 115.5.5. Mm -mm. I've got to stretch this guy out. See what I have to go through. Okay, anyways, uh, the answer is still the same, you guys. I just forgot to carry on that 0.5 right there. Anyway, so I get uh, 2.5 uh, comma 9. Now, you guys can get sometimes uh, where you get uh, infinitely many solutions. Like, say, you got, um, uh, I don't know, 5x minus 8 equals 5x minus 8. I'm just saving this, you guys. Never mind what I'm doing here. Um, and so if when you get the same quantity on both sides, that would be infinitely many solutions. Those lines are said to be coinciding with each other. They're on top of each other. They're the same line. If you get something like uh, 10 equals 16, uh, then that means that the lines are parallel. There is no solution, okay? All right, so that's pretty much uh, section 2.1 in our pre-calculus book. So let's go ahead and do section 2.2 and do three variables here. Okay, so let's look at the graphs on page uh, uh, 79 or 73, the three graphs, and I have it right here, you guys. Um, when you do three equations, they're not lines anymore, they become planes. Um, so when I do three, when I want to know the intersection of three planes, you could get one solution where they all intersect in this one spot right here. Let me get my pointer on where they all intersect in that one little spot right here, you could get infinitely many solutions where the planes all intersect in this straight line right there. So there's a, there's a solution there, a solution there, a solution there. There's a solution all the way up that line right there. So this would be infinitely many solutions right here. And a lot of times you, um, you're going to have three different uh, systems or three equations with three variables where there is no solution. Here's one unique solution or one solution. Sorry. Here's one case where there's no solution because all the planes don't intersect in the same spot. Here's another one where all the planes won't intersect in the same spot, and obviously when the planes are parallel right there. Okay, so uh, so you're going to get, we're going to mostly get this case where they intersect in one unique spot, but sometimes you'll get infinitely many, so it'll be a picture like this. Sometimes you get no solution, it'll be a picture like this. We won't have to draw the pictures, don't worry. Okay, so let's solve this equation, the system of equations, by the elimination method. Now, the trick is, you guys, either to look at these x's and try to get rid of an x's, 
try to get rid of the Y's or try to get rid of the Z's. I like to target where I see a 1, either X or a 1Y or a 1Z. And I looked at this 1Y. And what I'm going to do is get rid of Y. And the trick is, is to get rid of Y with these two equations and then get rid of Y with another pair of equations. You just get, that's the trick. You got to get rid of, um, and I just numbered them over here, one, two, three. And then take two equations and get rid of a variable. And then you got to take a different pair of equations and get rid of the same variable. Okay, and then you just solve them just like you normally would. So for example, if I multiply equation two by two, Multiply this by 2 is 4x, this by 2 is 2y, this by 2 is 6z, this by 2 is 0. I get this equation right here. And then watch what happens. I can go ahead and add that to equation number 1. And then look, the 2y's cancel. And I just have an equation now with 9x and 7z, with x and z. And I'm going to call that equation 4. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of y again, except with uh, equations 2 and 3. Okay, so I multiplied, I noticed if I multiply this by 2 again, it'll get me a positive 2y. So here it is, and then I just add that to equation 3. Okay, now when I add that to equation 3, I get that equation. Now I have equations 4 and 5, and I'll show them over here. Okay, so now we're going to solve equations numbers 4 and 5. So there they are right there, equations 4 and 5. And then I can look at, either get these guys to be 90x's, one of them positive, one of them negative. Or get these guys to be 28 Z's, one of them positive, one of them negative. I like staying with smaller numbers. Okay, so I chose the 28 Z's. So I multiplied the top one by 4, the bottom one by negative 7. And it gave me these two equations. And now these guys are ready to add and I can cancel out the Z's. Okay, when I do that, I get X equals 2. All right, now I can plug X back into either this equation or this equation, or these guys over here, but these guys have the bigger uh, coefficients. I don't want to deal with that. Plug in X equals 2. I think I plugged it into the 10 one right there. So 10 times 2 uh, plus 4Z, and I get Z equals negative 1. Okay, so now pick one of the equations from the beginning, and then plug in um, uh, Z equals negative 1, X equals 2 into one of the original equations. I think I chose that middle one again, and... Um, uh, I get y equals negative 1. Okay, so the answers are always in alphabetical order. X comes before y, that comes before z. So uh, there's my answer, 2 comma negative 1, negative 1. Okay, here's another one. Solve this system by the substitution method. Okay, so, oops, I got started for you right away. I'm going to have to erase that when I get started in my class. Okay, but anyways, I took this equation. So pretend like you just see this, this black equation stuff right here. You don't see my blue stuff right here. All right, and then so that would be your first step is divide uh, this equation by 3 and you get uh, y equals negative 3z. And then substitute that negative 3z in for the y's in the other equations. Okay, and then clean those up. And now we have two equations with two unknowns and we can use our algebra 1, algebra 2 skills. Okay, so I can make these guys both 12x's or both 56z's. I choose the 12x's, you guys. So I multiply the top one by 3, the bottom one by 4, because they're already opposite signs, so I don't have to worry about it. I get these equations. Then I can go ahead and add those together, and I get uh, z equals negative 2. All right, and then so z equals negative 2. can plug it back into one of these guys over here. Okay, so I'll plug it back into one of those guys. And um, oh, I plugged it into two places, you guys. I plugged z into this guy to get x, and I plugged z up here to get y right there. Okay, so when I plug in uh, z equals negative 2, I get y equals 6. And when I plug in z equals negative 2 here, I get x equals negative 4. So x, y, z, negative 4, 6, negative 2. Okay. Now, uh, okay, let's try this one. Solve this system using any method. Okay, I think I'm going to take that bottom equation and, and subtract off the 2w. And then put that in for the w's and, or subtract off the 2u, sorry. My bad. And then put um, uh, the 1 minus 2u in for that w and that w right there. Okay, and then so here it gets all cleaned up. So I, when I put this one in, 3u minus 2u is 1u plus that 2v. And then I subtracted 1 from 4 and it gave me 3. Okay, 5u minus a negative 2u is 5u plus 2u. Okay, there's my plus 3v. Minus 1, I added 1 to negative 2. Okay, now I'm going to solve these two equations. I can make these both 7s or both 6s right there. I think I chose the 7s because I only had to change one equation. Okay, then I can add those together. And I get v equals 2. And then I plugged in um, uh, v equals 2 right here. 
Okay, so um, uh, v equals 2 gives me right over here. So u plus uh, 2 times 2 equals 3, and I get u equals negative 1, and then I plug u right there, and I get uh, w equals 3. Okay, u, v, w, alphabetical order. So there's the answer right there. Okay, now you guys, I, I, actually there was one of these I made a mistake on. I know you guys are going to make mistakes, and you just got to go back and catch them, you guys. I'll show you where I made a mistake. I forgot to uh, distribute all the way through. I forgot, that, uh, I think it was this one, I think. One of these. Uh, yeah, I think it was this one. I forgot to multiply this one by 4 or something. Anyways, I, I, I get lost on this too, you guys. So this is, you know, there's a lot of room to make uh, careless errors, and so you just got to be careful. Okay, let's try this one here, you guys. Okay, I can choose to get rid of X's or Y's or Z's. And what I did was is I, I multiplied the first one by negative 2 so I can get a negative 6X. But when I multiply this by negative 2, it gives me a positive 2Y. And this time negative 2 gives me a, uh, a negative 4Z. This time negative 2 gives me negative 8. And look, it's the same equation or it's the opposite equation as equation number 2. Okay, when I put equation number 2 there and add them together, I get 0 equals negative 16. Well, 0 doesn't equal negative 16. 0 equals 0. Or negative 16 equals negative 16. So the answer is no solution. When you run into a contradiction like that, then it's no solution. So it will be one of those pictures that you saw. All right, let's try this one, okay? Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm go, I, I can go ahead. I don't know why I did that. Oh, I see what I did. Uh, I went ahead and took that bottom equation and subtracted 3x on both sides. And then, uh, sub there's, there's all kinds of ways to do these, you guys. If you're thinking of another way, then terrific. There's uh, probably four or five different correct ways to do these. All right. Then I substituted in y equals 4 minus 3x in for the other y's up there. And then watch what happens. Um, uh, let's see. I get... Um, uh, those simplified equations right there and then those guys are ready to add together and I get 0 equals 0. Well that's true. When you run into a predicament like that then your answer is uh, infinitely many solutions. Alrighty, now if you're in my class um, I would assign you that as your homework and um, the back of the book always has the answers to the odds so there's the odds to those even ones right there. Oops, I didn't do 18 for you. Sorry, I'll have to do that in the next one.